Now that we're comfortably in our post cocktail revolution crafty bubble, it's pretty easy to forget that it was not so long ago that we were drinking sticky luminous libations by the gallon, and I am speaking personally here. One such wonder was the apple teeny. It's basically a grown up jolly rancher, so you can understand why it became a phenomenon. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to recreate the original so that you too can relive your misspent youth. But also do stay tuned because I'm going to show you how to make an apple twist on a classic martini for something a little more classy. Before all of that though, let's cast our minds back to when The Verve had just released Bittersweet Symphony, Aqua's Barbie Girl was fighting it out with Hanson's Mbop, and Chumbawamba were tub thumping. Unlike a lot of the cocktails that I've researched, all of the main players in this story are still around, so it's actually pretty straightforward. The year is 1997, the place is LA, and the bar is Lola's. There's a bottle of the Kuiper apple sour pucker gathering dust on the shelf, and so the owner asked the bartender to do something with it for St. Patrick's Day. Vodka is not yet a dirty word, so he combines it with the schnapps and some kettle one, floats a lemon soaked apple slice on top, and the apple teeny is born. Except his name was Adam, so he actually named it the Adam's apple, but that didn't stick. The large portion sizes at Lola's, and probably the fact that it tastes more like a sweetie than an alcoholic beverage, um, led to an element of notoriety. They even took them off the menu for a while because of the number of people overindulging. But it had taken hold and spread like wildfire. It even became JD's drink of choice in Scrubs, although that was probably more of a dig at his immaturity than anything. Then came the craft cocktail revolution and a move back towards fresh ingredients and flavors and the apple teeny did become a little bit passe. So nowadays, if you ask for an apple teeny, most bartenders will balance it out with some citrus and apple juice and good quality apple liqueur. So I am gonna do a bonus how-to for those of you that don't want to go full cheesy, but also don't want to go too far down the classic martini path. So do stay tuned for that at the end. As always, we're going to get our garnish ready first, probably because this was a nightclub cocktail and so it was easy to pump out heaps of them. They didn't really tend to go with the apple fan, it was just an apple slice. But it is good to give it a little uh, rub with the lemon or stick it in some lemon juice so that it doesn't go brown. So you're just going to cut the lemon in half. And for the apple, it's really up to yourself. I kind of like to do it um, so that you still can see the little star core in the middle. Now you obviously want to try and get it nice and thin because you are going to float it on top so you don't want it just to sink to the bottom. Give it a little rub with your lemon half. You can pop that to the side. I know that I do always tell you that if the drink's all booze it should be stirred but this apple teeny really doesn't play by any of the rules. So in the small half of your shaker tin you're going to put 45 ml of Kettle One. 45 ml of the Kuiper Sour Pupple, 45 ml of the Kuiper Sour Pucker Apple Schnapps, it's a bit of a mouthful, the Kuiper Sour Pucker Apple Schnapps, I've got this nailed now, I did open this today and said that it just smelled like me being 17 all over again, I mean 18. The actual measurements are a little bit arbitrary here, it's just half and half vodka and apple schnapps, so you can make it as big or as small as you like. So you're just going to pop as much ice as you can fit into your smaller shaker tin here. Make sure they're nicely lined up and shake as hard as you can. Once your tins are nice and frosted, just pop them open. Give it a little taste. Tastes like regret. I'm going to grab your martini glass out of the fridge or freezer. So you're going to use your Hawthorne strainer to hold the ice back and then strain through the fine strainer to catch all of the little ice chips into your ostentatiously large martini glass. Now you're just going to gently float your apple slice on top cheesy apple teeny. So now you know. Before I give this a taste, don't forget to subscribe and if this did take you back to the late 90s or early 2000s, then give us a thumbs up or let us know where you first discovered this bad boy. Mm -hmm. 
It's honestly not as bad as I remember. Um, I think the sour apple schnapps might be of a higher quality than what I was drinking when I was in my teens. But it's just pretty clean, a little bit sweet, a little bit sour and apple-y. So what's not to like? If you prefer your drinks not to come in luminous green, the fun apple flavour can easily be merged with a classic vodka martini or kangaroo for all of the pedants out there for a classy apple martini. And if martinis get you going, you should definitely check out my other video on them. Now, as with all martinis, if you can have everything nice and cold when you're making this, so try and keep your mixing glass in the fridge or the freezer, you can even pop your vodka in the freezer, and of course your vermouth should be chilled in the fridge if it's open anyway. For your garnish, we're gonna make an apple fan. So the easiest way to do this is just to take a full cheek off the apple, so you're just cutting down parallel to the core. Then pop it on the cut side and slice lengthways along it, trying to keep it as thin as possible. Now obviously you can make this as ostentatious as you like. If you are in a bar, then your bar manager probably won't want you to use a full apple for this. Keep the cost down, but if you're at home, you can make yourself as much of a snack as you like. Then you just want to fan it out, give it a little dip in some lemon juice, so that just can sit to the side while you're doing the rest of your drink. So the lemon juice is just gonna stop it going brown kind of while you're making the drink and while you're drinking it. Before you start building the drink as well, you also want to get your absinthe rinse in your glass because apple and aniseed are a match made in heaven. So this adds a lovely other dimension to the drink. You don't want to be faffing about with that at the end once your drink's all diluted. So grab your glass out of the fridge or the freezer. Then all you have to do is put a couple of drops of absinthe in your glass then just tilt the glass on the side and try and get it as close to the edge as possible without spilling it everywhere. Shake out any excess and you've rinsed your glass. Now into your mixing glass, we'll add 45 ml of Belvedere. This vodka is rye based, so the spice works really well with the apple flavor, but really any good quality vodka would work. 15 ml of dry vermouth. I'm using Dolan because it's really crisp and herbaceous, but Nwali Pratt would be a good alternative. Really just anything that's nice and clean tasting. 15 ml of Massonet's Pomme Ver liqueur. You want to look for a good quality apple liqueur, which actually tastes like fresh apples and isn't too sweet. I've gone for Massonet's, but according to the hive mind of the Melbourne Bartender Exchange, the Giffard brand is a good option as well. Now fill your mixing glass with as much ice as you can fit in it. Now you're just gonna um, stir this by placing the back of the spoon against the inside of the glass and pushing the ice around. Use your julep strainer to hold the ice back. Just balance your little apple fan on the side of your glass because we had to keep in a nod to this drink's 90s roots. A sophisticated take on the apple teeny. Before I give this a taste, don't forget to subscribe and let us know what your favourite martini variation is. Classy or not? The absence just really kind of brings it all together because obviously without that it's pretty just kind of clean and fresh, like a little bit apple-y. Um, but yeah, that kind of makes, makes a real drink out of it. I think this would be a good one if you're maybe wanting to make a transition from sort of fruitier cocktails to, to more martinis and things because it's got all of, of the really lovely cleanness from a martini with still just a little bit of an apple zing to it to make it a bit more approachable. I do think that the apple teeny is a great example of why we should not dismiss disco drinks. They are really popular for a reason. So I'm obviously all for using good products and fresh ingredients, but the basic flavor combination of apple and vodka is an absolute banger. It's crisp and fruity and refreshing, and so has spawned a thousand variations. I know some bartenders who add a spike of citrus, some who use apple brandy or apple juice or puree rather than schnapps. Basically, there's an apple teeny out there for everyone, and we shouldn't be ashamed of it. Now, as I mentioned, I'm going to show you what I would make if you asked for an apple teeny at Bomba, where I work, because believe it or not, I don't actually usually have a bottle of sour pucker to hand. So we've got a little bonus make, which is Bomba's Easy on the Teeny. 
So as always, we're gonna get our garnish ready. I am a bit of a sucker for cheesy garnishes, so I do like to go for an apple fan for this one as well. And we're gonna need some fresh lemon juice for this one, so we'll give half a lemon a squeeze. Now I like to keep this one really nice and easy, so just equal parts of all of your ingredients. So we start with 20 ml of vodka. Um, I'm sticking with Belvedere for that nice rye spice, um, but Zabrovka is obviously another really um, popular one. That's the bison grass vodka, which has a lot of kind of um, herbal notes that work really well with the apple as well. Then 20 ml of a good quality apple liqueur. Um, I'm going for Massenet's Palm Fair, but Giffard or Cartron are other pretty big names that also make good quality ones. 20 ml of uh, cloudy apple juice. So you don't want to go from concentrate, definitely something um, as kind of as close to fresh as you can get. And 20 ml of fresh lemon juice. Now we're gonna fill the small half of the shaker tin with as much ice as you can fit in there. Pop your tins together and shake as hard as you can. Now you can adjust this with a little bit of sugar syrup if you like. It is quite tart, but I like it like that. And it's obviously not super boozy, this one, unlike the other two that we've looked at. So a little bit more delicate. You're just gonna use your Hawthorne strainer to hold the ice back and then just flow it through the fine strainer. Garnish with the required apple fan. And there we have it. Bomba's easy on the teeny. Now, before I give this one a taste, please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, or share, or all of the above if you're feeling super generous. Also, if you didn't know, um, we do have a new website which is up and running, and you'll find all of the cocktails we've ever made there, plus heaps of extra viewing for you. We've even got some downloadable recipes for use in your kitchen at home. And if you try making any or all of these, why not let us know which one is your favorite? You can tag us using with Cara Divine on Reddit, Facebook, Insta, and Pinterest. It'd be really good to see which ones you like. So now you know. I love this one. It's just really quite tart and fresh and zingy. Um, obviously a little bit less booze in there than either of the other ones. So a bit more of a kind of an afternoon tipple. So fresh and fun. It really is easy on the teeny.